I'm Mike Hanewald, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids, and it's gotten hot this week and looks like it's going to be hot for the next several days. And so I've gotten several questions and wanted to address a few things of how do we adjust our plans um, based on this heat. So first thing I want to talk about is spraying soybeans. So anytime we introduce a herbicide to a soybean plant or any plant for that matter, it's going to cause some stress. And when you add that herbicide stress on top of the heat stress that these plants are already experiencing, um, that's going to um, potentially cause some crop response, that herbicide, and that's going to be amplified with this, this heat that we're having. So I've got a few tips to keep in mind um, as you're looking about herbicide applications across soybean fields uh, during the heat. So first of all is prioritize your fields with a weed problem. So we don't want to delay any herbicide applications where we have severe weed pressures. Getting those weeds killed is the top priority because weeds are one of the biggest stresses on our crops. Um, however, if we have fields that we don't have severe weed pressure and we can delay those until it cools off, that wouldn't be a bad approach. However, make sure you still get all your acres covered because that weed pressure is top priority. Second is only use herbicides that you actually need. Take the time to walk your field, see what weeds you're trying to kill. Um, this isn't a time when we want to be mixing Roundup, Liberty, and Clefidem. Um, for example, that just is that many more modes of action on that plant, that much more stress and that many more um, active ingredients that plant has to metabolize. So look at the weed you have. In most cases, if, you, if that was your plan take mix, maybe you can get by with just Liberty and Clefidin that'll get all of the, uh, all the weeds that you're targeting. So um, make sure you're only using the herbicides that you need. Um, next, your AMS rate. So ammonium sulfate, we know especially with Liberty herbicide that that is critical to the success of getting a weed killed. However, you know, we talk about AMS as heating up the mixture. Well, Mother Nature is doing a lot to heat up the mixture um, as it is with the temperatures. And so we don't need quite as much to get the same effectiveness. And so cutting that back, instead of running the normal recommended rate of three pounds of AMS the acre, cutting that back to two or maybe even to a pound and a half can help to relieve the stress in the plant, yet keep the herbicide pass just as effective. Last, look at the other adjuvants and other additives to your tank mix. Um, we don't want to add anything that we don't need. So if you have a product that's calling for crop oil, for example, and the label requ requires you to use it, use it, but don't necessarily add a product that has a crop oil surfactant um, all tied into one. Um, you look at making sure that you're only putting what you need to in there because all those adjuvants make that mix a little bit hotter and will increase the stress. By all means, use what you need, but don't use any more than that. Um, next topic, um, real quick note on side dressing corn. I know there's still a decent amount of corn that needs side dressed across the state. And uh, with this heat, it's as important as ever to get that depth, um, get that side dress um, nitrogen down as deep as possible, five to six inches. We've shown that in PFR as having a benefit um, even under normal conditions, but under these hot uh, conditions that we're having, it's even more important. So um, you see our multi-location data shows a four bushel advantage. And then you look specifically at Ohio on heavier clay soils, we see an eight bushel advantage. And I would think that when it's this hot, it would be even that much more. So getting that underground is gonna be really important. For those of you who may be using Y drops to side dress, whether that's with a toolbar or with a sprayer, I would strongly recommend that you inc include a um, volatilization inhibitor or a stabilizer of some type um, because with that nitrogen laying on the surface, it's going to be exposed to the heat and it's going to be, we need to do everything we can to help keep that there um, for a few more days until we can get some moisture to take that in. Um, don't be fooled by um, shade that a taller corn crop might provide with the Y drops. Um, volatilization is driven by heat, not just sunlight. And so we want to protect against that. The last comment I want to make is on uneven looking corn, uh, where you see some yellow color or the corn that's, that's really not taking off. Um, a lot of times you may see um, that the lower leaves um, are turning, turning color or dying or, or falling off. Um, it's no secret that this is because of too much moisture that we've been having this year. And, um, and so we've, we've got that going on and we're seeing um, some pythium. And so it may be difficult to see in the video, but when you can just peel that outer layer of the root right off like that, and that outer layer has that slight brown discoloration, this would be fairly mild that we're seeing here. Um, but the amount of time that that corn spent underwater in those roots without oxygen, it's no surprise we're seeing some challenges. So the question I get is, what can we do about this? Um, so breaking that soil open with a side dress bar is one of the best things you can do to reintroduce oxygen into the soil. But if you're going to go across the field to spray a post herbicide pass, I'd encourage you to consider adding a foliar. Um, there are several foliar feeds that are PFR proven. You can see those listed on your screen there. And um, 
any of those that contain those nutrients to just give it a little bit, a little bit of a boost. Our roots are compromised right now from um, that stress and that disease. And so if you can give it a boost with some micronutrients, that'll give that plant some strength to help recover from that disease. Um, in addition, um, that'll help the plant through a little bit of stressful time that this heat's going to bring. You know, you can see that this corn plant's starting to curl slightly. There's plenty of moisture in the ground. It's not from a lack of moisture. It's from the heat stress and a slightly compromised root system. And so um, that's something to just don't, don't be alarmed when you see maybe a little bit of drought stress. Um, take a look at your roots. And like I say, if you're going across the field and have the opportunity, consider adding that foliar pass. If you have any questions about these or any other agronomic topics, feel free to reach out to myself or your local BEX representative, and we'd be happy to help.